one, you can guess, he John chapter 1, verse 21, where we left off. And the Bible says, and they asked him, talking to John the Baptist, the camera up. Mm -hmm. Talking to John the Baptist, the Sadducee, the Pharisees, the scribes, saying, Now who is this terror? Show me your credentials. And he says, Art thou Elias? We looked at last week, Elijah. We're looking for Elijah. And he says, No, I am not. So, they're looking for Elias. And Elijah will come in, in the, before the Messiah, but in the tribulation, he's going to show up. And he said, No, I'm not. And they looked at Elias, Elijah, Art thou that prophet? And he said, No. Now we're looking at that prophet. A Pacific, that, not a prophet. That prophet. So they're looking for Elijah, and they're looking for a prophet. That is that prophet, and the scriptures with study will tell you who that prophet is. And this will go with our study two weeks ago when we looked at uh, what the Bible is the law, the prophets. So, Acts chapter 3, John, Acts chapter 3. We'll go find out who that prophet is. And then we'll pick off on a good study on Acts chapter 3, verse 22. And see, the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God. You've got to go here, and God wants you to find it. God wants you, hey, you want to know about me? It's in the scripture. Read them. He says in uh, verse 22, For Mo Moses truly said unto the fathers, Israelites, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, Jewish, like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things, Whatsoever he shall say unto you. Now they're not looking for Moses, but they're looking for a prophet like in the Moses. But if you remember what the statement was when they're talking to John the Baptist, that are you that prophet? Moses said, like me, not me. So already they, they got it messed up, but in the tribulation period, Moses is going to show up. And now we're looking at, we've looked at Elijah. That's the prophet we, we read. Now we're looking at Moses. And remember, that was the, the writing of Moses. Mo, uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Moses and Elijah are the two main characters of the scriptures. Besides Father Abraham, which fathered the whole nation of Israel. So they're looking for Elijah. Now they're looking for that. They're looking for Moses, but Moses said, Light unto me. Acts chapter 7, verse 37. Stephen's history of the Jewish people. Now Jesus Christ and Moses are not the same, but they're alike. In Acts chapter 7, verse 37. The Bible says, this is that Moses. Now why does Stephen say that Moses? Because that's what they asked John the Baptist. Are you that prophet? See, that's why it's important to have the proper Bible, because when you mess with the Bible, and you mess with the words, you don't get the exact words, and you don't get the message. Stephen pointing out, hey, remember what back then when you went to ask John the Baptist? And remember what his answer was? Yeah, he said that prophet. Remember what you said? You, you're looking for that prophet. So what's Stephen tell them? This is that Moses. They said that prophet. Stephen said that prophet, his name is Moses. He gave them the answer. Which said unto the children of Israel, a prophet 
shall the Lord your God raise up unto you and your brother, like unto me, him shall ye hear. Now we saw that in Acts chapter 3. Now let's go back to Deuteronomy 18.15 where Moses writes it. Where Moses is talking to the nation of Israel. Deuteronomy 18.15 and the direct quote from Moses to the children of Israel. 18.15 Now, Deuteronomy is written by Moses. I was skin Bible pages sometimes, don't Oh, 1815. So, this is Moses speaking to the nation of Israel. Verse 15. The Lord thy God, Jehovah, will raise up unto you a prophet, capital P, that's God, that's Jesus Christ. This is where it's quoted. This is what they're looking for. From the midst of thee. And when we re remember when we read John, John, I don't believe we came to it yet, but I think we did. It says he came unto his own, his own received him not. Moses said there's coming a capital P prophet, a prophet of all prophets. He's going to be Jewish. So never mind when you see pictures of Jesus white or even black. Jesus is brown. He's Jewish. His mother, the virgin born, traces her genealogy all the way back to Abraham. Moses. To the prophet from the midst of thee and thy brethren, Jewish people, like unto me, unto him shall he hearken. So there's one thing that they knew in the scriptures was Elijah's coming and Moses is coming. They were waiting for the second coming of Elijah and waiting for the second coming of Moses. So Malachi chapter 4, just before Matthew, the last book of the Old Testament. Go to Matthew and go back to the left. And Moses and Elijah are going to show up in the tribulation period. Malachi chapter 4. And verse 2. Malachi 4 through the last book of the Old Testament. Last chapter of the Old Testament. Verse 2, but... Unto you that fear my name shall the Son, capital S, that's Jesus, that's God, of righteous shall rise with you in his wings. He shall go forth and grow up as a calf of the stall. All right, there's Jesus, there's the Messiah. Now verse 4, same chapter, verse 4. Remember the law of Moses, my servant, we looked at that, which command you in horror for all Israel, statue and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet. Before. So, there it is. Malachi says the last book, hey, I'm going to send you Elijah. They're like, John, are you Elias? Greek form Elijah. No. Scratch your head. Are you Moses? You know, are you the, are you the lawgiver? No. <laughs> But there's the two key features. And these two men, I mean, it's a further study that we'll get later on, but th there's two prophets that show up in the tribulation period, and one changes water into blood. Well, well who did that in the Bible? Moses did. And then the, the other one, he's saying, you know what, God? We don't need any rain for any while. Stop the rain. Well, who did that in the Bible? The king. Elijah. And they're going to torment the Antichrist. But we're not ready for that yet. We looked at Elijah last week. Now what we're going to do is, we have this prophet, we have that prophet, that's, that's Moses. And he's from God, he's of God, and he's of God, that prophet. He's coming to be of the Jewish family. 
And he's similar or a similitude like Moses. Now, John chapter 6, verse 14. John chapter 6, verse 14. Now, John 6.14 is a testimony of people proclaiming who Jesus is. In John 6.14, then those men, when they had seen the miracle of Jesus, did. Now, the miracle which just happened was he fed, uh, is it the fourth, the, uh, is it 4,000 or 5,000? It was either the four to five thousand, the Bible doesn't mark. It's a feat in the multitude, and that's five thousand. No. Alright, this the outline this alright, he feeds them all it's either four or five thousand, alright? And he's got set uh, five barley loaves and two fish and he feeds five thousand or four thousand. Either case. And they're like, hey, I got some news from you. What? You know what? We just sat down and had dinner. Yeah. And there's like 4,000 of us. Yeah, no, that's a lot of people. This man did it with, set, with five loaves and two fish. What? Now, Ron's a fisherman. You're not going to feed maybe four people with two fish, if you're lucky. Small bites. Four, uh, minimum 4,000. This Bible doesn't mark. And they're like, okay, here's the testimony, verse 14. And those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, this is of a truth. That prophet that should come into the world. Well, what did Moses do that what Jesus just did? Well, God fed them with the manna the entire wilderness. Wilderness means there's no there's no fruit trees, there's no veg vegetables, there's no crops. And it wasn't really Moses that fed them. Moses gets the credit. It's God that fed them. But you know what? Do you remember the story of our father? What's that? Remember how God fed them in the wilderness? Mm -hmm. He fed them man. Remember that? Yeah. Well, we got a God just like that over here. He just did it with five barley loaves, and he did it with two fish. It's Moses. Well, it, it's not Moses. It was a prophet like unto Moses. So they're like, John, are you Elijah? He's like, no. Are you Moses? Are we going to see? Are we going to see everything that's happened in Exodus and not? Are you? He's like, no, I'm not that guy. He's John. He's the forerunner, but John the Baptist is foretold in Isaiah, but he's not the Messiah. So now what we're going to look at is we're going to take the rest of this study and we're going to look at Moses and Jesus. And we're going to be in two places. We're going to be in the Old Testament and pretty much the same book in the Old Testament and we're going to be in the New Testament pretty much. So we'll keep your hand in, in, in the books. The first place we're going to find out, Exodus chapter 2. And what we're going to look at is Moses and Jesus. Right? If I say Moses and Elijah, forgive me, because when you study the Bible, it's Moses and Elijah. Moses and Elijah. So if I make that mistake, I'm human. Okay. Uh, Bible. Oh. Exodus, two. Exodus chapter 2, verse 2. Exodus 2 2. I mean, this is not my study Bible. I wouldn't dare take my study Bible out. I don't want to lose it. So this, is, this is a good Bible I found in the store, but it's all this, and they're very hard to turn. So, Exodus 2 2, we're just going to slowly take what the scriptures say. And a woman conceived and bare the son. When she saw that he was a goodly child, 
She hid him for three months. This is Moses, baby Moses. And when she could not no longer hide him, she took him from an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein. And she laid it on the flags by the river's bank, and that would be the, the Nile. Pharaoh has ordered all the babies killed. Moses is born of his family, and he's protected. And his sister stood far off, with it would be done of him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river, and her maidens walked along the riverside. I mean, they took their bath in the river. The princess has her, you know, make sure nobody's staring at her. There's no eyewitnesses to her taking a bath. That's, that's what it is. And walked along the riverside, and when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Hebrew children. I mean, that child is floating down the river in the ark. The guy's like, quietly. And she takes it, and they bring, her, they bring the princess the ark. She looks at the ark, she opens it, they live. The guy's like, okay, now cry. What? And a mother's heart. Now cry, Moses. Now let it have it. And she's like, this is one of the Hebrew children. Moses is Hebrew. Moses is of the seed of Abraham. And his sister, verse 7, and said his sister to Pharaoh's door, Shall I go call thee the nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child? Here is Moses' sister, Miriam, hanging out with the princess, the princess of Pharaoh. She's like, hey, can I go get one of my people to take care of that baby for you? And verse 8, Pharaoh's story 6, go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. <laughs> Moses' mother is called. Hey, mom, okay, here's, here's my brother. Here's your son. And Pharaoh's daughter said, Take this, take this child away and nurse it for me. I will give thee thy wages. Now be careful when you're talking about welfare because Moses' mother was paid by the government to take care of her own child. We're going to do with that. The daughter of Pharaoh said, I'll take you take care of this baby for me. Which she's, she's talking to the mother. I don't know if you know it. I'll, I'll pay you to take care of this baby. Yes. Alright. I'll pay you the wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And the child grew and she brought it to Pharaoh's daughter. And he became her son. Now watch this. Now this is important. This is a little side note. She, Pharaoh's daughter called his name Moses. Up to now, that little baby Moses never had a name, recorded in scripture. Moses comes from the name of Pharaoh's daughter. That means to draw out of water. I drew him out of the Nile. So Moses is a protected baby, protected by God. Now, keeping your place in Exodus, because we'll be back. Matthew chapter 2. You're going to need some good hands, because we're going to go back and forth from, from Exodus to Matthew. Matthew chapter 2. Now that was Moses. Matthew chapter 2, verse 14. We'll start in verse 13, the paragraph mark. Matthew 2, 13. Now that was Moses. Now this is Jesus. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child, that's Jesus, and his mother. Well, there was Moses' mother. And flee into Egypt, and be there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Moses was protected because Pharaoh was out to kill all the Hebrew children. Rome is out to kill all the children. Moses and Jesus had a, had a death brand put on their head. If you have a baby boy, you bring it to the government and we'll kill him. 
And when he arose, verse 14, he took the young child, his mother, at night and departed in Egypt. There he was into the death of Aaron. So Moses was protected, and Jesus was protected, and they were supposed to be both babies that were to be dead. So that's one part of their life. Okay, back to Exodus chapter 7. Exodus chapter 7, verse 11. Now they're like each other, but they're not. Now Moses murdered a man. Jesus never murdered anybody. Moses, uh, Moses had a problem with his anger. Jesus never had a problem with his anger. Though Jesus did get mad. Moses, uh, Moses. Exodus chapter 7, verse 11. Exodus 7, 11. Exodus 7, 11. And Pharaoh called the wise men and the sorcerers. Now the magicians of Egypt, they also did like manner with their enchantments. And they cast out every man his rod and he became a serpent. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. Alright, so... Moses is told by God, you're going to have a battle with Pharaoh. Throw, Aaron, throw your rod down so it turns into a serpent. Pharaoh's like, okay, magicians, you know, get your black hats, come over here and do the same trick. And they do. So Moses has contention with evil. Keep your place in Exodus, let's go back to Matthew 4, verse 1. Notice serpent. Notice serpent. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Now this one's an interesting. Moses and Aaron dealt with a serpent and magic. Don't ever get a Christian magician. It is not Christian. Magic is never a Christian. And yet they're out there. I know two of them. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Then was Jesus led up in the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. You say, well, what's that have to do with Moses and the serpent? Or he's tempted by the devil. Revelation, the last book in the Bible, chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12, last book in the Bible. Serpent, the devil... I get it. I get it. Revelation chapter 12, and I am looking for nine. nine. You ready for this one? Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. Serpent, the devil. 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 Serpent, and Satan. Moses dealt with the devil with that rod turned into a serpent. Jesus dealt with the devil. And Revelation chapter 12 says they, they both, the devil and Moses both fought the devil. And we Christians fight the devil all the time when we're trying to live right. When you try to live right, the devil's going to be there. Like, hey, if you're a worldly Christian, the devil don't care about it. The devil don't hang out at the bar room. He hangs out in the churches where there's people trying to do right. And if you're active in loving the Lord and trying to serve the Lord, you've got the devil in your life. That's what Moses is doing. That's what Jesus was doing. So again, the fact is that that serpent and, and the devil are the same. So back to Exodus 34. A prophet like unto Moses. And that's what we're looking at right now, like. Uh, 34, 28. Like I said, don't get, you know, Moses and Jesus the same, because they're not. That's hard. The wind feels good. 
Exodus 34, verse 28. This is Moses. And he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water. And he wrote upon the tables of the words of the covenant the Ten Commandments. Those are the Ten Commandments. You know, you see what Moses had? Moses wrote them. Took him 40 days and 40 nights, and while he's on that mountain with God, he didn't have no food and no water. Because he's in the presence of God. Mm. Now, Baptists say, you know, when we all get to heaven, we're going to have a party and we're going to eat and all that. Moses didn't need to eat. <laughs> Man, he's having sweet fellowship with God, and he needed no food. But this notice. He's in the mountain 40 days and 40 nights, no food and no drink. Alright, now, Matthew chapter 4, verse 2. Matthew chapter 4, verse 2. And I hope what you see is something new that you never saw before. I mean, there are some people saying, well, I don't read the Old Testament. Well, the Old Testament is the New Testament. After chapter 4, verse 2. And, you know, as we're seeing these things, there are some idiots out there. I'll call them idiots, but I, I have been proved by people I know in the nation that they look, they look forward to Calvary. You see what the scriptures we say here? They knew exactly who they're dealing with with John the Baptist. They knew exactly who they're dealing with Jesus. They still didn't know who Jesus is. I mean, can we not see it? So Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, uh, Matthew chapter 4, verse 2. Verse 1. And Jesus was led up in the spirit of the wilderness to be tempted the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward the hunger. Moses and Jesus were up on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights and did not eat and did not drink. By the way, Elijah, I think we did it last week, fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Don't you try it. Because you're not going to survive. I think you can live I think it's like 72 hours without water, something like that, and up to three weeks without food. This is the miracle of God. So, again, this is Moses like to Jesus, Jesus like to Moses. Next, Exodus 16. Exodus 16, and we've already pointed this one out. Exodus 16, verse 15. Did I get that page, the wind up? <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I'll tell you what, one thing though about the wind and being like this, we don't have to pay for air conditioning. Yeah. Amen. Churches have to pay for this, this air conditioning, though. Know. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm having a problem. All right, uh, Exodus 16, 15. I like it. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is manna. You know what that means? Manna means what is it? That's what manna means. What on earth is this? It's bread. Okay. Man, it's our turn. What is this? You ever have anybody, you ever, get, you ever put something down for them and they, and they look at their plate like, what is that? That comes out of the King David 1611 Bible. I've done it. 
I go to someone's house and they'll put something on my plate. What is that? That's what manna means. Uh, okay, well, it's manna. I don't know what it is. Man, verse 15. For they wist not what it was. They didn't, they didn't know what it was. So next time you want to say, what is that? Say, man. Say, hey, I know some Hebrew. And Moses said, this is the bread which the Lord has given you. This is a miraculous feeding of the children of Israel. I already talked about that. And the Psalms, the book of Psalms says, this is angels for so, now, Matthew chapter 14. I kept these in Matthew, pretty much all these in Matthew, so. Matthew chapter 14, verse number 20. Moses, miraculously by God, fed the children of Israel all the time during the wilderness. Forty years. In Matthew chapter 14, verse 20, And they did all eat, and were filled, and they took up the fragments which remained, twelve basketfuls. And they that were eaten were, the, the, they that had eaten were about five thousand men, besides women and children. You know, they say the feeding of the five thousand. That's counting only the men. That's not counting the women and the children that were playing around. So Moses miraculously through God, through the manna, fed the children. And Moses said, hey, God said that's the bread. Jesus miraculously feeds the children of Israel, over 5,000, with bread. Moses like, like uh, Israel. Exodus 34, 35. Exodus 34, verse 35. So do you see, as you're going to Exodus when they came up to John the Baptist and said, are you that, do you see, they wanted a, pony, a dog and pony show act. They wanted free food to come flying down from heaven. They wanted Rome's butt to be kicked, because Rome was in charge. They wanted all these signs and wonders. They were not looking for the cross of Jesus, like many idiots will say. I'll say that loud for the video there. They're not looking for the cross of Jesus. They're looking for signs and wonders. They're looking for a miracle. We want free food. We want a free buffet. Isn't what they wanted? They're like, oh boy, Israel's going to be... Not yet. They have to have the suffering Messiah. Exodus 34, verse 35. Not all preachers from pulpits are correct. There are many preachers in hell. You tell them I said that. I'll tell them to their face. I'm not ashamed. Corinthians is saying, marvel not that Satan has become the angel of light, and, and marvel not that his ministers. Exodus 34, 35. And the children of Israel saw Moses' face, or the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone, and Moses put a veil upon his face until he went in to speak with him. Moses comes down off that mountain and his face is glowing. I mean, he's got a good sunburn by God. It's radiant. And, and Israel's like, whoa, what's going on with you, Moses? And he gets this for the rest of his life. It's glow, bright. So, Matthew 17, 2. Matthew 17, verse 2. Looking for that prophet that's like unto Moses. This is what we're looking at. Matthew 17, verse 2. 
if they knew the Old Testament Scriptures and they knew the Old Testament Scriptures, how come they didn't know who Jesus was? Because they were blind. Jesus even said they had eyes to see, but they didn't see. They had ears to hear, but they weren't hearing. And if they were looking forward to the cross of Jesus, they would have been prepared, but they weren't looking. Their Messiah was standing right there in front of them. In 17 verse 2, look, Jesus, and was transfigured, this is Mount Transfiguration, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun. There's Moses. How bright was Moses' face? It was like, the, it was like you're staring at the sun. That's why he had to put that veil on. He was blind in Israel. But it didn't bother Peter, James, and John when they were up there when it was Jesus. You know, when we go to glory, we're going to glow. We're going to have that heaven. Listen, if we went to glory right now, our eyeballs would pop right out. It says in New Jerusalem that the New Jerusalem does not need the light of the sun or the moon, for the sun, for the light of the Lamb of God enlightens it forever. That's a holy light. It's a pure light. No darkness, no sin, no evil, no. It's holy and righteousness in that light. A perfect light. Ain't there never been such a light here on the earth. That sun is just a little flashlight, light bulb, compared to the bulb of God. So, Exodus 15, 24. Exodus 15.24. We saw the greatness of Elijah last week. Look at the greatness of Moses. And yet the Bible says Moses was humble. Exodus 15.24. Moses was me. Moses never bragged. Exodus 15, 24. And the people murmured against Moses. And they constantly murmured. Where's the food? Where's the water? He brought us out here to die. Moses, look at this family, he was killed. Moses this, Moses that, Moses this, Moses that. I can imagine the day that, that when God told Moses, all right, Moses, you're going to die. I want you to tell Joshua he's taking over. I can imagine the heart attack Joshua had that day. I'm what? I'm taking over them? No, please, no. I see how much of a hard time they're giving you. But Israel complained against Moses. Oh, he got, you know why he didn't go in the promised land? He got so mad, he smoked that rock twice. He, you guys are sick of her and smoked that rock. And God said, I said, speak to her. Moses had an anger, anger issue. So, with that, oh, is that Mark 7 2? I write terrible. Mark 7 2. Matthew, Mark. Mark 7, 2. Moses had murmuring. Mark 7, 2. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread, defiled, that is to say with unwashed hands, they found fault. They found fault with the sinless one, Jesus. Jesus had no sin. What you doing, Jesus? Why are you doing that, Jesus? Why are they doing that, Jesus? How can you find fault with someone who's perfect? Imagine Jesus, the perfect child, growing up in his name. Why can't you be like Jesus? He's such a perfect... Yeah, he is, because he's God. I mean, many... Well, show me Jesus, or if Jesus was here. Well, you wouldn't find fault with Jesus, they found fault with Jesus. 
you would find something that Jesus did perfectly, you, you would complain. That's a, that's a weird one. That the sinless Jesus, they found fault in him. Pilate said three times, I find no fault in him. I find no fault in him. I find no fault in him. What do you want me to do with him? Crucify him. Why? What did he do? Just crucify him, will you? The government found no fault, but his own people did. Alright, so Numbers chapter 12. Numbers chapter 12. No, uh, F, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. Numbers chapter 12, verse 1. Numbers chapter 12, verse 1, it says, And Miriam, that's Moses' sister, and Aaron, that's Moses' brother, spank against Moses because the Ethiopian woman who he had married. For he had married an Ethiopian woman. Brothers and sisters coming up to Aaron and, you know, we've got a problem with you, brother. Who do you think you are, brother? Moses had been discredited by his own family, by his own house. Alright? Jesus, John chapter 7. And we're not going to, but I mean, we've only got a few more left to do. But we could do this all day. And I hope you see that they were supposed to see Moses when they saw Jesus. And say, aha! They didn't go, aha! They go, uh oh! <laughs> That guy's ruining business at the temple. I mean, they're making a profit at the temple and Jesus comes in, makes a skirt of, of rope and starts chasing all the animals and kicks the tables over. Jesus would do that in many churches today. There are churches where they sell CDs and cassette tapes, so I old I am, and books and all that in the back of the church. That's why Jesus knocked the tables over. They're making merchandise. You know, once they, you know, you can go buy a cup of coffee and buy donuts or anything. That's what Jesus kicked the tables over. You're making merchandise in the church. And that guy that flashes a toll-free number and, you know, send him 45 bucks and we'll pray for you. That's what Jesus knocked the tables over. He, he said, you made my house a den of thieves. Well, welcome to the last you see in church. John chapter 7, verse 5. Neither did his brethren believe in him. That's Jesus' brother. Despite what the Catholics say, Jesus had brothers and sisters, and Mary was not possessed to a virgin. She had other children. And his, his brothers and sisters said, I don't believe in you. His own brothers and sisters rejected him. Moses' own family rejected him. I mean, the Bible says to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. His brothers and sisters said, no, I didn't even go with you. Who do you think you are? There's even one point, I, I, I don't know. It's in John, but he said, you know what? Jesus, you're crazy. Just go somewhere else, will you? Take you and your disciples go somewhere else. That's his own family. That's that. They lived and grew up in the family with God. And I guarantee, having God as your brother irritated you because Jesus did good all the time. I grew up with that. I had an older brother. And every every grade that my brother was in, and I grew into being. When I had the same classes that my brother had, well, you just have to be just like your brother. Don't shut up, I am not. And I wasn't. Imagine what it was like for Jesus. He was the firstborn. Everybody that, they had to follow, they couldn't. Because he was God and they weren't. And they came to their life saying, Jesus, no, we don't believe in you. That's a 
the same thing with Moses. So, Exodus 32. I mean, plain and simple, just to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. You are a sinner, for all of sin comes short of the glory of God. And without Jesus, life is hell. Exodus 32, verse 32. Now, this is a verse. I don't know how it's out about it. This is a verse that, you know, it, it, bring, it would bring tears to your eyes. This is Moses speaking about Israel. Israel has sinned against God. Israel has worshipped the cow, the golden cow, the golden arches, the cow that said, you know, eat chicken. Aaron had made the golden calf. Moses came down and found the idolatry. And they have sinned terribly against God because idolatry is a sin against God. Moses goes back up to God in verse 32. Yet now, if thou, God, will forgive their sin. Now you see that dash? If your Bible's got a dash, Moses is scratching his head for me. Lord Jehovah, you, you, you've got to forgive your sins. I, I know how bad it is. Idolatry. And look what he said. And if not, block me, I pray thee, out of thy book, which thou hast written. Moses just said to God, God, they sin. And if you will not block their sin out, take my name out of the book and save their soul. Moses is making intercession for the children of Israel. Put me in hell that they might be saved, Lord. That's what he's saying. Now, who's that sound like? John 17, 9. John 17, 9. Moses said, I'll stand in the way. And whatever you're going to do to the children of Israel, do it to me. There's one meeting between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. He suffered and died for our sins. And Moses like, you know what? I'll take it. If you've got a preacher to pray for his congregation like that, You've got a man of God that you need to pray for it and need to sit under it. And you cannot rarely find a preacher like that. They're rare. John 17, 9, Jesus. Some people would think, this is not the modern Jesus. This is not the liberal Jesus. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. Whoa. But for them, but thou hast given me, for they are thine. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine. And I glorify in them. Jesus said to the Father, they're ours. And, and when Jesus is on the cross, he says, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do, and I'm dying in their place. That's what Moses said. Moses, God, they sinned a terrible, and if you cannot and will not blot out that sin, put it upon me. Jesus, I know you can't forgive them, Father. I know you can't. There's nothing they can do to save their soul. Put it upon me. And when he cries on the cross, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? That was for all of us. That's for all of us that Jesus Christ suffered and died. Put it upon you, Father. And when I die, I'm going to hell to deposit your sins. Uh, 
Numbers chapter 11. If there's one thing you can say about Moses, though he was angry, though he was irritated, he loved an Israelite. Numbers chapter 11, verse 16. Now this is a remarkable one. Numbers 11, 16. Okay, this is Moses. Numbers eleven sixteen, And the Lord said unto Moses, Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel, who thou knowest to be elders of the people, people of authority, officers over them, bring them unto the tabernacle. All right, I want you to get seventy men, and we're going to put them in, we're going to give them an office. Seventy men. Luke chapter 10. In the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke. Luke chapter 10, verse 1. This is a remarkable one. Now, the Bible ain't correct. I don't know what it is. Luke chapter 10, verse 1. Now, we've been looking at Moses, and we've been looking at Jesus. So when they said, Art thou that prophet? Luke chapter 10, verse 1. After all these things, the Lord appointed other seventy. Moses had 70. Jesus had 70. So what we have... And then one more place. Matthew 17, 3. Matthew 17, 3. Matthew 17, 3. Believe it or not, this is about Moses. But this shows up in well, not to do so. Christ hasn't died yet, but soon the wind starts blowing. Alright, uh, Matthew 17, 3. This is the Mount of Transfiguration. Let's sum up two days' study. And I'll look at one more thing of Moses. Here we go. 17, 3. And behold, there appeared unto him Moses. Right, that's the man we're talking about today. And Elias talking with him. There's Moses and Elias. That's what started John. What's going on here with Moses and Elias? Jesus is on his way to the cross. Moses and Elias shows up and Jesus is talking to Moses. Moses? Yes, sir? I'm going to say Matthew. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Yes, sir. Did I fulfill all prophecies in the first time? Yes, you did. All you got to do is now go to the cross. And, I mean, the prophecies yet are your death, your burial, and resurrection. But everything is fulfilled. Okay? Check. Elijah. Yes, sir? Of all the written prophets, remember we talked about that? The law of Moses, when we talked about the prophets. This is why we did it. Of all the prophets, the major prophets, Isaiah and the, and the, and the twelve, except for my death right now, it's going to happen. Have I fulfilled all the first prophets, first prophecies of the first act? Elijah goes, look, 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 yep, everything fulfilled, except for your death, burial, and resurrection, according to the scripture. Jesus verified with what we talked about. The book of Moses and, and the writings of the prophets. Everything's fulfilled. Scripture's fulfilled. Jesus can now go to the cross. Moses shows up before death. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. Moses has died. And he shows up again. Right there in Mount Transfiguration. Yeah. Moses has been dead many years. Acts chapter 1, verse 3. Acts chapter 1, Jesus has been Jesus has been crucified. According to scriptures. He's been dead. And then he 
three days and three nights, he's risen from the dead, according to the scriptures. Acts chapter 1, verse 3. To whom also showed himself alive after his passion. Moses showed himself alive after he died on, Mount, on the Mount of Transfiguration. Jesus has died on Calvary. He's been buried. He rose again. And he shows up again after his death, like Moses did. Peter, James, and John saw Moses alive. Well, Jesus wanted them, I think the Bible says 400 and more people, and one of the people that Jesus showed himself alive to was Peter, James, and John. So you see, we go back to John chapter 1, verse 21. And believe it, we're, we're not done with John 1.21. Lord willing, we're going to look at Moses and Elijah next week. Last week we looked at Elijah. This week we looked at Moses. This week we're going to look at Moses and Elijah. And next week, Lord willing. Lord willing. I'm going to show you Moses and Elijah showing up in the tribulation period. Getting the Antichrist all angry. And I'm going to show you the Antichrist killing Moses and Elijah. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to show you Moses and Elijah coming back to life. Moses dies twice and is resurrected twice. Elijah was raptured. We talked about that with the, the chariots of horses coming to get him. And Elijah comes back to earth to die <laughs> and then gets resurrected. You thought Elijah was a good study. You thought Moses was a good study. Wait till we talk about Moses and Elijah. And neither of them lived at the same time. When Elijah shows up, Moses is long dead. In John chapter 1, verse 21. And they asked him, John the Baptist, What then? Art thou Elias? No, I'm not, I'm not him. He says, I'm not him. Art thou that prophet? There's Moses. And he answered no. And then next week, Lord willing, we're going to look at Moses and Elijah. And that's a whole study in itself. And we got tons of scripture for that, but we're going to take it nice and slow. And we're not value for time. We're not in a rush. And there's much to learn. I hope you learned today. Anything, questions, or anything? Man. That was the bread. But yeah. you're saying, what is this? What is, the, the name manna means, what is it? What is bread? Yeah, Moses said it's the bread, and in Psalms it describes it as the angel food. Man did, it says, men did eat angel food. That's the name. Wow. So, the, the Hebrew word manna means, what is it? Oh, okay. I don't know what it is. You know? Like Salom. S A L E M means peace. Jerusalem, Jerusalem means city of peace. Manna. Or each of manna. What is it? I know it's manna. And it's funny how when we are handed food ourselves and we look at the food, like, what is it? That's what, that's what Israel said. I mean, like, you run, take it something you caught fishing somewhere. And you, you cut it all up and you, you fry it up and you put it on a plate. And I say, what is it? That's what it is. 